right, let's take a hymn book, turn to page 113. Page 113, let's sing first, second, and last of glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing of sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of mine. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of mine. Glory to his name, I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood of blood glory to his name Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, He deserves all the glory, doesn't He? Uh, not glory to the preacher's name, but glory to the Lord's name. Not glory to somebody, but glory to He deserves all the honor and the glory and the praise. Uh, you glad to be in church tonight? Say Amen. amen. We appreciate you being here. Good to see each one of you. Good to have Brother Terry King. He's dear wife with us tonight. We've been supporting him for a little while down in Florida. And, and uh, we're glad that they're here and visiting with us tonight. You make them feel welcome. Amen. But we're glad I don't see any other visitors. If you visit tonight, you're an honored guest. And we're humbled and thankful that you're here. And uh, we're going to get right into the service. You that are watching live stream, thank you so much for uh, being uh, in the service via live stream. And if you're physically able to go to church, we'd love to see you right here. Here in the sanctuary. Our information is on the site that you're on. And uh, if you need help getting to church, if you're in the area, please let us know and we'll make sure you get to the house of God. But let me make a few announcements quickly. Don't forget our homecoming revival, anniversary revival starts Sunday. Uh, be our 27th year. God's been good to us in 27 years and to God be the glory for all, for all great things He hath done for us at Bible Baptist Church. Started in an old store building, not a storefront but an old store building on Highway 357. Y'all pray about that. Um, I'd like to get that building and bring it somewhere here And uh, as a reminder. And uh, so y'all pray maybe the Lord will work it out. And uh, maybe one of these days we can purchase that. And, and get it here, but we're 27 people, and God's done great things for us, and uh, nothing we've done, but all that He done, and we thank God for that, and uh, be 27 years this coming Sunday, but uh, we will have homecoming, we'll have a meal, so bring all you can, amen, uh, kill the fatty calf, if you don't mind, if, if, if you all have a fatty calf, everybody kill one, all right, and uh, we'll, eat, we'll eat it, uh, praise the Lord, so we're looking forward to that, be a part of that, and then after the service tonight, those that are going to Brother Stroud's uh, meeting, youth meeting uh, Saturday, there'll be a meeting for you after the service, so if you plan on going, please uh, please uh, be here, be a part of that. I won't get to go this year. I got, a, uh, Of course, we have a funeral Saturday, uh, and I will mention that here in a moment. I appreciate Brother Stroud. He's God's man, and uh, lives what he preaches, and uh, we thank God for him, and uh, having this meeting every year has a heart for young people, and uh, a lot of people get help. I got help last year. I sat there last year uh, for all day with a kidney stone and God still helped my heart. Amen. Uh, so uh, you that are going, we praying for you to be careful. You hear a lot of good preaching, good singing. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to y'all going. So you, you stay around after the service and have a quick meeting about that. 
And uh, let's see here. Don't forget Saturday night, 7 p.m. for prayer meeting. Uh, we'll have prayer, so remember that. And then also Sister Hilda Emery's uh, service will be uh, Saturday at 11 a.m. at Seawright Funeral Home. They will receive friends after the service. Uh, so if you can be a part of that, please do. Also, we're serving the family a meal at their home. They just live a rock throw from Sea Rights. And if you can have food here by by about 1.30, we'd appreciate that. Miss Chris, does that sound good, 1.30? And uh, so if you can have food here by 1.30, we'd appreciate that. Need all the help we can get there. About 25 or 30, uh, we'll be feeding, so we need your help. So please help us if you don't mind, all righty? And uh, so want to make that mention as well. Any other announcements I failed to mention? All right, choir, sing one for us. have a time of fellowship. Let your neighbor know you're glad to see them. Remain standing. Our ushers are coming.
praise the Lord. I like that song. Uh, we know the landing will be safe. And uh, we don't know what kind of bumps and trials and troubles we'll have to go through in this life. But I'm glad we're going to get there. The old ship of Zion's going to land safe. Praise God. And uh, we do appreciate, again, you being in God's house. We're going to receive our offering. And you give that which belongs to God tonight. Amen, Brother Bill. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for letting us come here tonight, Father God. We pray you be each one that's here, Father, for all the prayer requests been mentioned. Father, the unspoken God, you know each and every need, Father. God, I pray you be with the preacher tonight, God. You give him the word to preach, Father. Not give us open ears, open hearts, to apply to our lives, Father. God, I pray you be with each one of us. Watch over and take care of us, Father God. We pray for this offering that you use for your honor and your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Church. You can be seated. times we have prayed and prayed and give up when help's right there about to take place. I appreciate that good song. Thank God for the choir number. We do appreciate that. It is uh, Wednesday night. We take special time for prayer and prayer requests and do continue to pray for, like I say, the Emory family. That the Lord continue to give them grace and strength. Brother Glenn is his children, his grandchildren, and so forth, that God give them grace and peace. We know where Miss Hill is at. She uh, left a, a solid, solid testimony, a very, very humble 
Christ-like lady. And uh, remember them, if you would. Miss Jo, I got to see her yesterday. She was having a good day, and she's wanting to be here Sunday. So let's really pray about that, that God just intervene, enable her. Brother LaVon with his treatments, and uh, Preacher McMillan, he is home, but Miss Ann is still in the hospital. Uh, she did get moved to a regular room, uh, room 701. But, uh, and of course, after that, they're looking for some therapy. So please pray for her. My father-in-law, mother-in-law, Tim and Kathy Walford, remember them. Brother Dennis Berger, uh, keep praying for him. My sister Kelly says his mother, Earl Gosnell, Lillian Blackwell, uh, also Scoot and Ann Mann, uh, Francis Pruitt, and then Francis McSwain, Jenny Coley, uh, Brother Tim Jett, don't forget him. Keep praying for him as he's there getting those treatments. Brother Bobby's dad, keep praying for him also. Uh, Tony Ballou, Donald Ravan, Randy Cooper, Jeremy C Simmons, uh, Vivian Howard and Kathy Kerr, Clyde Williams, uh, Alma and Wayne Hope, uh, remember Sister Rita Bruce, Rhonda Johnson, uh, Evelyn Dan Jones, Lamar Maccabee, Diane Ferrier, uh, Gl uh, remember Glenn Emmerich, had him down, Billy Close, uh, Sister Pauline Wooten, Mildred Wade, uh, Cindy Jarvis, Sister Glenna Mason, good to see them tonight. And also, Brother Ellis wanted us to uh, pray for a special need for him tonight as he's interim pastor there up, up, up in Hendersonville area. So remember that if you would. Uh, Judy Kirkman and Patsy Hayes, uh, let's pray about these. Uh, let's see here. Jerry Cantrell, remember him. Trish Wilson, let's pray, pray for him also. And then uh, glad that... Uh, Brother Eddie Miss Carey's back home with us. Her daughter's doing well. Uh, Shirley Crocker and Kay Eubanks asked us to pray for her tonight. So remember her as well. And Preacher David also, that God's just helping encourage them in a special way. Anybody over here have a spoken need? Yes, ma'am. Oh, mercy. Let's remember her. Yes, sir, buddy. We sure will. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Miss Mia, you're right. Amen. Yes, sir, honey. You got one? We sure will. Sure will. Anybody else over here? Anybody over here? Yes, ma'am. We sure will pray about that. Anybody else over here, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We give him God the praise too for taking care of Andrew and Mary Beth Jones, his little boy. Uh, he fell in some water and it looked bad for a while, but God intervened. So thank God for that. Anybody else over here? Yes, sir, Brother Bud. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody over here? Patsy? Yeah, sure will. Anybody else? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Yes, yeah, remember them. Hate that. Anybody else over here? Anybody over here? Yes, sir. Just remember that. Remember that. Anybody else? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just remember that. Anybody else over here? Unspoken? All right. All the can would like to. Let's come around the altar tonight and we'll pray. And also pray for the remainder of the service. Pray for revival. Uh, we need help. Just not go through a series of services. We know we're going to hear right preaching. But we need, we need to get help. We need to come looking for help. Amen? Amen. Father, we do love you tonight. We do come in the name of Jesus. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd intervene in the service tonight. We ask you for the anointing and the power of God upon us. We pray, Lord, that you'd put a hedge around us tonight. Cleanse us for our sins of omission and commission. Lord, help your people. And I do ask you, dear Father, Lord God, to be with us in revival this coming week. Uh, Father, we need help. I do pray for Brother Simpson, Brother Rackley, Brother Jarvis, that you'd fill them with the power of God. And Lord, 
We pray for the Emory family, Lord, you'd be with them and encourage them. And, Lord, I do ask you, Lord, for uh, for Esther and John. Johnny, Lord, at seek. We pray you touch them, dear God. Brother LeVon, Miss Joe that wants to be at church, Father. We pray for, the, for her, Lord, you just enable that. And, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, for uh, Brother Walt. I pray for Brother, Preacher and Sister Ann McMillan, Lord, touch and bless them and be with them in a special way. And, Lord, many requests of prayer, many different needs, Lord, spiritually, physically, emotionally, Lord. You've heard each need, and we pray that thy will will be done in every one, Lord. Again, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the seed of Abraham. Bless them, Lord, and we claim that covenant, dear God. And you bless them at bless them and curse them at curse them, dear Lord. And we bless them tonight. We pray for our country, Lord. Pray for those in authority of our country, Lord. You save them, guide them, lead them, that we can live quiet and peaceable lives. And, Lord, I ask you, Lord, if there be one here tonight that don't know you as their Savior, this be the very hour the Spirit of God will draw them under repentance. Lord, give us a word from your word tonight, dear God. Please give us liberty and option from the Holy Ghost. And Lord, again, we pray for each one of all, save them. And Lord, we pray, dear God, you'd have mercy on us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother King. Amen. It is good to have one of our missionaries with us tonight, Brother Terry King. We appreciate him, and uh, he's going to give us an update, and uh, then we'll go on with the service. Brother, you come right ahead. Good to have you tonight, brother. I appreciate you. I'm not usually in the pulpit without a Bible. I love my Bible back there. But I appreciate the church. Thank you, Lord, for the support. Thank you for your prayers, and uh, it's been a trying time the last couple of years. COVID kind of not our college enrollment way down, but through that, that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, we have developed and finished, we were already developing a library, um, an audio and a video library for the classes that we teach. And um, so we've almost got that completely finished. And, and our Zoom, we're Zooming all of our classes. Anyone that wants to tell you, we, we're there from 5 p.m. in the evening until usually around 9 at night, 9.30 at night. And um, so anyone that's interested in taking classes and you don't want to come to the beautiful city of St. Augustine, uh, then we can, those classes are, you'll be able to take them online. And one of the good things is this coming year, starting in the fall, uh, tuition for the first year is completely free. So... And it's an opportunity for people that we believe a call to do the work of the Lord is a call to prepare. Right. So uh, Dr. Sattler used to tell us that. Dr. Sattler used to say, people from the South need to get all they can because people think we're a bunch of dummies. And, uh, but he, but you know, one of the things that he instilled in us that were in those classes with him is that just do all that we can to make sure we're on our way, headed in the right direction, and that the people who are following us and we're teaching and we're training make sure that they're following the right person. So I appreciate you. Thank you. If you I'm going to leave some brochures tonight with you, Pastor. If you're interested, you can look at the website. We have a lot of things that, that young people can be involved with immediately upon enrollment if they're there in St. Augustine, youth prison work. In fact, um, there's been a revival. I've been the chaplain at one of the youth prisons there in St. John's County for 25 years, ever since I moved to Florida. And uh, the last six or eight weeks, it's just been like a revival. We've had uh, something like 30 people get saved. We had 10 saved last Sunday morning. So praise the Lord for that. I'm not a numbers person either. If you will follow me on Facebook, you know that. But I, I'm just amazed at what God is doing. Here's my verse for you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's my favorite verse in the Bible. I believe it's the greatest promise in the Bible. Because that's not me telling somebody they can be saved. That's God. If they call, he'll save them. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your help. Pastor, thank you for giving me this time. Yes, sir, Brother Chair. Good to see you tonight, brother. Bless your heart. I talked to Lydia uh, Curtis this evening, and she said tomorrow they're doing blood work on Brother Tim, and they get the results back to see, make sure that the treatments are, he can still continue to go with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. We got to see, I can't remember which one we saw Sunday in Murfreesboro. Wasn't, li wasn't, 
Stephanie. Yes, right. Yes, sir. So keep praying for them also. Yes, man. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Amen. Mr. Riley, y'all got a song tonight? Oh, come on. to shine and Lord without me you can cause the dead to rise and Lord without me you can make the blind to see you can tell the mountains to be cast into the sea but Lord without you I am nothing on my own. I'm just earthly flesh and bone. Coming before your throne. But Lord, if I have you, I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir to the throne. You can do anything, but I'm nothing without you. earthly flesh and bone coming before your throne Lord I have you I'm a child of the King I'm an heir to the throne you can do anything but I'm nothing without you I'm nothing without Oh, man. 
first morning I've been where you are I've had my heart break too I've cried in the dark Yes, I can't relate with you Consumes the guiding light. Remember, it's almost morning. Joy will replace the tears. Calm all your darkest fears. It won't be long till the dawn. Tomorrow's another day to live free of all your pain. So don't give up on your faith it's almost morning it's almost morning joy will replace the tears calm all your darkest fears it won't be long till the dawn tomorrow's another day to live free of all your It's almost morning. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. John, enjoy the good singing. Uh, I appreciate the message and song and what a blessing each song has been to my heart tonight. And I'm glad God is in control. And uh, I, I'll be honest with you folks, I've been <laughs> bouncing around. Uh, I don't like feeling unsettled. You preachers understand what I'm trying to say. And I'm probably not saying it like I should say it, uh, but yet it just seemed like my heart wouldn't get settled uh, today on, on the message. And uh, so uh, I had a message that I said, all right, Lord, I believe this is it. Well, he just told me that wasn't it. Uh, so uh, you say, how did he tell you? In my heart, my spirit. And uh, God speaks to us that way. And so uh, we're going to do our very best. This is just a simple thought. Actually, I preached at the nursing home. Uh, that God lit on our heart just a while back. And I've used this title before, but I want you to go to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter number 2, please. Song of Solomon, uh, chapter number 2. Actually, I was going to preach out, of course, Psalm 86 and talk about revival. And, of course, uh, that's what I had planned. That's what I had planned to do. Uh, but yet, with, even with revival coming up, uh, this uh, will be a good thought uh, for tonight on revival coming. We understand that uh, revival, revive, those that's been vibed needs to be rekindled. The fire needs to be rekindled and fired. And so there's some things that uh, will hinder the church. And of course, we understand uh, that the church of God's people, saved people, make up the, the, the spiritual body of Christ. And so we need revival. Uh, we need a touch from God. And folks, until the church gets revival, we will probably won't see many people get saved. Amen. Until the church gets serious and gets spiritual, uh, when the people of God get serious and get spiritual, and, and then we can see God begin to save people. And folks, I want to tell you something tonight. If you're here unsaved, uh, you, better, you better really consider where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. Uh, because we're all going to spend eternity somewhere, heaven or hell. There's no in-between. And I'm thankful for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not God's will that you perish and go to hell. It's His will that you come to repentance. And you preacher, what does all that mean? Come to the place where you realize you're a sinner by birth and choice. That's what I come to the place. God took me to that place. And, and I kept trying to tell the Lord how good I was and how all right I was. Now, surely I was going to heaven. I was okay. I was just a young boy. Uh, you know, the Lord started doing my heart about the age of 12. And, man, I, I, I wrestled with that and I battled with that. And I kept telling the Lord, well, I do this and I do that. Matter of fact, I almost preached Matthew 7 and uh, I just, just on my heart. And, uh, you know, there are going to be some good 
decent people that go to hell. Get a hold of that. There are going to be some good, decent people. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful work. Lord, and they're pointing out their, their faithfulness. They're pointing out what they, their service. They're pointing out all these good things they did. And the Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you. They, they had the formality but never had a relationship with Christ. They'd never been born again. Just like Nicodemus. Uh, he had all the religious rights that we could put on a man and say, yeah, he's going to heaven. But Christ said, hey, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we understand that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God has saved the most, the most uh, religious, and He has saved the most demonic. He saved the old boy, had a legion of devils in him. I mean, that's a bunch of devils. I mean, that could have been up to five or 6,000 devils in him. And God went to where He was. This guy, he was, he was strung out. He was cutting himself, running naked in the cemetery. They tried to bind him. And he broke, he broke the chains. They couldn't bind him. But that old boy, wild as he could be, looked up and there comes a boat. And Jesus stepped out of that boat. Amen. And Christ came to where he was. Amen. Jesus met him where he was. Hey, this, this old boy didn't say, oh, I think Christ is in that boat. Let me put some clothes on. Let me act like I got some sense. No, he, he, hey, Christ came to where he was. Like he was. Amen. So don't, don't say, well, you know what? I like to get saved, but I got to do this, do that. No, you don't. Just come as you are and he'll take you as you are. But he won't leave you like you are. Amen. Amen. That's the key. He'll take you like you are, but he won't leave you that way. He will not leave you that way. And folks, just like when he saved that old demoniac and had all them devils in him, told the devils to get out. Saved that old boy. The Bible said the next time that crowd saw him, he was clothed. So you get saved, you put clothes on. He was clothed in his right mind at the feet of Jesus. And he said, Lord, I'm going to go with you. The Lord said, no, uh, I'm calling you to the mission field. Where are you going me to go, Lord? Back home. And in, in two different places, he said, go tell them. And then another place, he said, go show them. Can you imagine? He sent the message, by the way. Can you imagine? Here that boy comes. And hell, nobody knows who's that stranger coming here. Probably his daddy and mama had to run him out of the house because he's just so wild and vile. None, hey, none of the relatives could handle him. None of the friends. All oh, they turned their back on him. And nobody wanted him. So he went to the tombs. He went to the tombs to live with the dead. But there's one that wanted him. Jesus did. Amen. I don't care how far you've gone. Amen. I don't care how vile your life is. Jesus wants you. Amen. Preacher, nobody wants me. Jesus wants you. Amen. Nobody cares about me. Jesus cares about you. Amen. Nobody will give me time of day. Christ will give you time of day. Amen. He'll come to where you are. Yes. Take you like you are. and He'll change your life. Yes, sir. If you'll let him. If you let him, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And for whosoever, as the brother just, just quoted, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I'm glad I'm a whosoever. Amen. I'm glad I'm in that crowd. Whosoever. Amen. Whosoever, no matter whatsoever you've done. Well, wheresoever you've been, you are whosoever will. Let him come, he said. I think about when he saved that woman uh, that, by the well in John 4. Vile and ungodly. Had five husbands shacked up with another man. Living vile and wicked. And Jesus met her at the well. Amen. Give her living water. Right. Saved her. Amen. She left her water pot. Why'd she do that? She didn't need that life anymore. Amen. 
and God used her life. I want to say something today. God will save you. And God will take care of you. That's message number one. So don't leave here at the night unsaved. You're wanted by Christ. And this church loves you. Amen. But you, you don't even know who I am. We, hey, we know who you are. Jesus knows who you are. We love you. We want to see God change your life just like he did ours. You may look across this auditorium. You may be watching, look across. Well, I'm not like these people. We, we would always like this. Woo. We, we, we wouldn't always like this. It was the day I'd have laughed in your face. You said, boy, you're going to pastor a church. Well, I'd have laughed in your face. But God changed my life. Made a new creature, creation out of me. He'll do the same thing for you. He's no respect to persons. All right, let's preach to the church just a few minutes tonight. In Song of Solomon chapter 2, you know the verse. Verse number 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. And we're humbled to be in your house and thankful that we can be here tonight with your people. And I pray to your God that you'd meet the needs of the hour. Preach through us. And Lord, I pray you deal with hearts and lives. If there's one here lost, you'd save them. Lord, I pray for the church tonight. Uh, the body of believers that are here tonight, I pray you'd help us. Lord, get our hearts uh, prepared for revival. And I pray, dear God, you forgive us where we fail you. Sins of omission and commission, Lord, enable us, Father, to pray without ceasing in these days. We love you for all you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Of course, we understand, and I again, I'm not trying to categorize sin, but yet the Lord is pointing out here in the text, uh, the little foxes spoil the vines. In other words, in these sheepfolds in different places, uh, they would take care of the predator, uh, the wolves, uh, you know, the coyotes, the bears, whatever it is. They, they, would, they would fix it where those big boys could not get in. They, they paid close attention to that kind of thing. But yet there were some rodents. Uh, there were some little foxes that uh, they didn't need the big gaping hole. They didn't need anything like that. They didn't come through the front door. They didn't need it. They would find a little, a little wedge somewhere that was overlooked. Or a little spot that, oh, we know that's there, but I, it'll be all right. And next thing you know, they get up and a little fox has come in and spoiled the vine. We see that in a picture of God's people. I believe the, the vast majority that's here uh, tonight, what we might would consider uh, a big thing. And folks, again, I mentioned this, I, I, I don't categorize sin, but I understand some sin makes bigger splashes. Some, some sin's more visible and does a lot of damage. Are you listening to me? Uh, I mean, honestly, folks, I mean, look at Solomon and Gomorrah. I mean, uh, that sin uh, made big damage. Amen. I mean, it, a whole city's burned down because of it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I feel like the vast majority of God's people here tonight, uh, those big things that we might consider, drunkenness, adultery, fornication, uh, things that uh, we might consider as dope and big things. Uh, oh, preacher, I've got that taken care of. I've settled that, and, and I don't have to even consider that. But it's, it's not those things that's hindering the church, but it's, it's the little foxes. And by the way, the little foxes can do a lot of damage if it's left unattended. And they can do damage right under your nose. You can be in a mess before you realize what's really going on. As a matter of fact, you can be so, so unconscious of it. I mean, your life is in disarray before you know it. And of course, I don't mean to read a verse of Scripture to depart there from, but I want to take that verse and use it by way of application tonight. And things that the Lord has laid on my heart. There's about four things that I could preach on 50 things. But there's four things that as a pastor... I deal with personally, and I, as a pastor, I see that God's people deal with it. 
Now, you may be unconscious of it, but if you think about it, uh, I believe you will agree. Now, the first little fox I want to talk about tonight is the little fox of distraction. The little fox of... It's, uh, folks, it's easy to get distracted with life. It's very easy. I mean, a problem come, and next thing you know, it has invaded your whole thought life. You are consumed with whatever the distraction may be. And before you know it, you're so consumed with that little uh, distraction that you don't realize that you are, you are straying from things you need to be. I thought about, I ain't been long preached this, when, when Mary and Joseph was, was headed back and, and uh, they went a whole day's journey and, uh, and they realized that Christ wasn't with them. They allowed some distraction and they had to go all the way back. Guess what? To where they left him. And the Lord, still being under their authority, the Lord said something very, very deep. Wished ye not, I must be about my father's business. He said, y'all got distracted. And y'all have allowed whatever it is to make you forget. You know, you, hey, Joseph, you remember the dream? You remember who, who you birthed? Man, you, you, you remember yeah, that thing was in you conceived of the Holy Ghost? They, 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 he's your Savior? And you have a mission, you have a, you have a call, and, and you've allowed whatever it is to distract you, and I automatically begin to think somebody else will take care of that. And they went a whole day's journey. He wasn't even with them. They didn't even realize that they, they had lost the presence of God. Amen. And see, folks, we understand in this life, that's what the devil's doing to God's people. Distractions. Social media can be a distraction. I mean, folks, your job can be a distraction even though you've got to work. But it shouldn't become your little God. That's, that's the problem. It shouldn't ever, your, your job, your career should never become your little God and you put it first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you. And so the, the little fox of distraction. I wonder how many folks here tonight would be honest and you came in here distracted with things. Again, I'm not belittling anything that you're going through, but yet the Lord deserves the preeminence. He deserves the very preeminence of our life. And yet we allow little things that folks in light of eternity don't mean anything. Oh, but I preach it's important, but in light of eternity, does it really matter? And I dare say, a lot of us would say, you know what? In light of eternity, it really doesn't matter. We, we allow ourselves to get distracted, get upset with things that's out of our control and none of our business. Can I get a witness? And the devil sits back and laughs at us because we don't have enough discernment to say, wait a minute, devil, you ain't tricking me this time. I'm not going to give account for that situation or that individual. Amen. And I don't, have any, I don't have any control over whatever's going on, so I'm going to keep my focus on you, and I'm going to allow you to work in other people's lives. Amen. Little thoughts of distraction. Folks, we don't need distraction this coming week. Uh, as your pastor, I'm beckoning you. Don't allow things to, to, to jump up and be a distraction to keep you out of meeting next week. You ought to make that top priority. I mean, we make school for our children a priority, our job a priority, extracurricular activity a priority. But from, from Monday to Wednesday, we need, and Sunday to Wednesday, we need to make this meeting a priority. Don't allow things to distract us uh, from being here. I understand some have to work, some get sick. I know that. And I, you know I'm not talking about that. But yet, uh, some folks, you know what? I, 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 I've just been aggravated today. I'm going to stay home. That's the worst thing you can do. You're not going to get any. There's no chance of getting any help if you do that. 
But come on in here aggravated and let the Spirit of God touch you. Amen. Let the Spirit of God help your heart. So there is a little false of distract, distraction. But then there's a little false of discontentment. We live in a time and God's people, we're not content. Paul said it best, in whatsoever state I'm in, I'll be content. He knew how to live with a lot, knew how to live with a little bit. And he said, I'll be content with that. And folks, uh, lack of contentment is a little fox that's really spoiling revivals. It's, 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 hurting, it's hurting homes. Because discontentment brings many sorrows. It brings the sorrow of, of bigger debt than you can pay. It'll bring discontentment, seeing what other people have, and, oh, i got to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not content with this automobile God's given me and it's paid for. i got to have something else. Discontentment. Oh, oh, uh, we, have a, we have a cozy little home here, and God's helped us pay for it. But you know what? Well, and ain't nothing wrong if you can do it, but don't let discontentment be the deciding factor of moving forward with something that's going to hinder your walk with God. Next thing you know, you then, your discontentment has done put bills way over your head, and you're having to work overtime on Wednesday night and Sunday. You're welcome. You're, you're having to miss church because you're having to put more hours in. It's bad enough that the world has already got it fixed where some people can't even help. They have to work on Sunday. But it's even worse when we put ourselves in a place. They say, you know what? Folks, it, it, it's a shame that, that one of God's men, I know there can be circumstances, but that's very minimal. But shame to be put yourself in a place financially because of discontentment and have to approach your boss man, supervisor, whoever, and ask to work on Sunday. Come on. That's right. I remember when the Lord called me to preach. And, the very, and Brother Terry, the very, the very first literature I, I got sent in the mail to me from Tabernacle, that was, that was what it was on there. A call to preach is a call to prepare. And I believe that to this day. I was on the second shift. I went to my supervisor, had a good job, good insurance. And I said, uh, Lord's called me to preach. And the school he's sending me to, they, they meet at night, 6 to 9.30. I said, I'm going to need a first shift job. And he said, we don't have a first shift job for you. I ain't been there long. And I said, well, I'm going to have to probably quit then. I said, I hate to. I said, but, uh, you know, I, God's done this. I, I've, I've got to do that. And so he said, well, all right then. You know, just kind of blunt. And I, I went on about my business. And what long he came, he said, well, I hate to lose you in this department, but I think I found your first shift job in another department. Now, it's, a, it's the lowest job you can have in that department. Pay ain't no good. I said, I'll take it. Preacher, you was content with that? Yeah, because, because it wasn't going to hinder what God had me doing. And then, if I didn't ask for too much, I said, hey, I need to, get, I, I need to work, come in 30 minutes early. And leave 30 minutes early to get home. You know, it's about an hour drive right at it. I mean, I've done asked. I've done, I mean, I've been, been asking, you know. So I went to this different boss man. <laughs> and I said, hey, I said, uh, I'm in Bible college. It's 6 to 930. And I said, time I get home, I said, I, can, I probably can make it. And I said, it'd be a blessing. And they, they were strict on Three shifts, the hours. I said, if I could work 7.30 to 3.30 during school, I said, that'd be a help to me. He says, all right, I'm going to let you do that. He said, but the nights you don't have school, you be here 8 to 4. I said, that's not a problem, sir. And for four years, I was content doing the lowest job in the department and Working 7.30 to 3.30, And after I got married, <laughs> we were struggling some. I worked 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the evening. 
You say, preacher, that's crazy. I, I had a priority. Now, to be honest with you, I don't know how much I learned that night, but I was in my place. My eyes rolling back in my head, but I was in my place. But God's people, the little fox of this, we get discontented and we bury ourselves in holes. And what it, it don't seem like a big deal to start off with. I've been young, you, you, you young people, and I say young people, young married people, I, I've been in your place before. It ain't been that long ago. <laughs> it really has, but. And I'd get my eye on a truck, and I would think, you know what? I really don't have to. I can tweak this, tweak that, and work a couple hours. I can make that payment. Won't be no problem. I'd sell Kim on it. In about three months, I'm like, what in the world? That thing I just had to have, I despised it. I'd sell it. I'd sell it. But God, hey, being discontented will hurt you spiritually bigger than you ever know. A little fox. It'll get you in a hole where you can't tithe. You can't give offerings. Then you got another problem with God. Because we do believe that God, God ordained His work to be done through His people with tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? How does a man rob God? With holding his tithes and his offerings. Amen. Uh, and I, I'm a firm believer on giving on gross. I can't help Uncle Sam gets to it before you do. Render under Caesar what is Caesar, what's mine is mine. And if, especially if you have a spiritual leadership position, preacher, Sunday school teachers on, and you're not, you're not tithing biblically, then you're hindering what God's trying to do here. Boy, how did we get off on that? Discontentment causes that kind of stuff. Discontentment does that. We get discontented and we have to do this, give that, do other. And we pour our, our efforts and our finances into something or somebody and we slight God. And discontentment caused it all. Number three, I got to hurry. The little fox of distraction, the little fox of discontentment. But let me jump to this with the little fox of discouragement. And again, I repeat, it's not a sin to get discouraged. It is one to stay that way. When discouragement comes, we ought to be seeking an avenue to get out of it. On our knees and, and in the Word and, and, and getting help from a, a, a stronger brother. I think of two men. Two of, the great, two, of the greatest, two of the greatest men of the Bible, that's Elijah and John the Baptist. John came in the spirit of Elias. John the Baptist, we preached about him. We preached about him last Wednesday night, trusting God by the brook, trusting God on that, on that trail of Zarephath, trusting God with the widow woman said, I don't have enough to feed you. Trust God when he stood against the prophets of Baal. And one big mouth woman put him to running and got him discouraged. No offense, ladies. Some of y'all packing. I'm on I'm, I'm open target here. And he found him a cave and begged God to take his life. Discouragement. John the Baptist. Preaching, calling sin by his first name, ends up in prison. A man that saw, saw the Trinity manifest. He baptized the Son, and, and the Father spoke from the throne, and the Spirit descended as a dove, and he baptized Christ. And wow, what an experience. And now he said, hey, I'm so discouraged in this prison. He said, I want you to go, go, go ask the Lord, is he really the one, or should I seek another? Amen. Discouragement. Little foxes of discouragement. Folks, we get discouraged about things. And again, 
Discouragement comes to the best. I'll just give you two examples, but it shouldn't stay with us. If you, if you wallow in discouragement, uh, you'll end up away from God. Then this thought, the little fox of distance. See, the little fox of distraction, dis- discontentment, and discouragement, all, if not dealt with quickly, all lead to distance. Preacher, what do you mean? Peter. Peter has so much zeal at one time. He said, Lord, all shall be offended, yet will not I. I'll give my life for you. And the Lord said, really? Peter, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice, or vice versa. And the next thing we know, because of his distraction of his own flesh, discontentment, and then discouragement, he begins to follow Jesus afar off. That's what it leads to. Now, he can still see Jesus, Can I say this? At that point, he's not totally out. He's popping in and out. He's, He's from a distance, but you know what? He allowed that distance to linger too long. And it became a time when he said, the man that said, all shall be offended yet when I'll die for you, to saying and cussing, I do not know him. Don't even know him. And that's where the little, that's where the little foxes spoil the vine. The little foxes of these things spoil the vine of your spiritual life, which in turn spoils what God's doing at church. God, help us. Help us get consumed about being in the will of God. Help us be content with the things God has given us. Help us cry out to God daily and allow Him to commune with us through His Word daily. In church tonight, What could be in my life or yours that could hinder revival this week? See, some of these little foxes you've, not, you've really not thought much about. You've dismissed them. You've given a good excuse for why you're not doing or doing that. And you've went on about your business. Some of you, and I don't know why God keeps bringing my church, you know I don't preach on this all the time. I don't preach on hardly any. But God's blessed you with a good mind and a good job and good, good, good money. And, 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 what, you, and what, what you make does not even come close to what, what you give. That, that's a hindrance to revival. You say, preacher, who in the world are you preach to? I have no clue. I have no clue. The Lord knows. And automatically, when a preacher says that, you automatically get offensive. Oh, he's going to talk about money. Again, y'all been sitting here all this time. How many messages have you heard me preach on it? But I'm not, I'm not ashamed because it's a, Bible, it's a Bible subject. So I'm not ashamed to preach it. Not afraid of you getting upset because I'm preaching it. Because it's truth. See, it's the little foxes. Discontentment, jealousy, envying, and strife, and backbiting, and murmuring. These things. Oh, they're, oh but at least I'm not committing adultery or a drunkard. But these little foxes are spoiling the vine in churches quicker than all the other stuff you're not doing. Lord, help me. Help me. I need help. I need God. Boy, there's a lot more I can say, but I'm going to stop. 
And I just want to have all to call. Miss Lisa's coming. Everybody's standing. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed just for a moment. <coughs> Folks are already coming. Before we go any farther, I've got to pray myself, but before we do that, I'm just scanning the building. No one's looking around but me and the Lord. So nobody's going to embarrass anybody here tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. You've never been saved. Preacher, I'm concerned about my salvation and where I'm going to spend eternity. Would you pray for me? Are they one honest heart? Well, nobody can see you but me and God. Slip your hand up. Hold it up until I'll see it, and I'll say thank you, and you put it right back down. Are they one? One honest heart. Say, preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven when I die. Would you pray for me? Are they one? Nobody can see you but me and the Lord. You slip that hand up, and I'll say thank you. You put it right back down. Are they one? Quickly. Are they one? If you know without a shadow of a doubt you're going to heaven when you die, you've trusted Christ and Him alone. Can I see your hand? If you know that you know. Thank you. If you couldn't raise your hand tonight, we'd love to see you come. We'd love to help you. If you raised your hand because you just didn't want not to, and you still know you're not, come. We'll help you. But church, I'm thinking about us tonight that are saved. What could be in our hearts and our lives that would hinder revival? Preacher, I need prayer. Are they one? Preacher, would you pray for me? God bless you. I saw. I see these hands. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? God see you. Thank you. God bless you. You can look this way. You come. Anyone else need to come? Anyone else need to come? God's touched your heart. The Spirit of God's touched your heart. Anyone else need to come? need to come before we close. Amen. She's going to play one more stanza. If no one else comes, we're going to close. be saved you come I appreciate all the ones that's already come around the altar we all need to be praying for each other church I love you and I appreciate you thank God for what he's done for us and what he's doing for us in these past 27 years God's been good to us
All of God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, it's been good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Church, thank you for your faithfulness. Brother King, Sister King, good to have you all tonight. Appreciate y'all stopping in and being with us. Church, make them feel welcome. Let them know you're glad to see them tonight. And uh, we're going to give them a little love offering. But if you've got something you, the Lord's laid on your heart, you put it in their hand. Amen. Whatever the Lord, Spirit of God bids you do. And again, don't forget, we, we, start, we start meeting Sunday morning. And uh, so uh, we're going to have a meal after the service. So we need all the help we can get with that. So please be, please be prepared for that. All righty. All hearts and minds clear. There will be a meeting after the service for you that are going to Brother Stroud's youth meeting. Amen. Uh, so you stick, you stay around. I'm talking about some good week. Last year, it was a blessing, man. It was a blessing to hear all that good. Well, actually, God preached the whole day. Amen. It was just a blessing. And uh, people were getting help. And uh, so uh, I, I, I don't have a problem in the world sending our folks to things like that. Amen. Well, they're going to get help from God. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you're looking for per perfection in meetings, then... You don't need no sense you come into this one this week, ours, because there, there's no such animal. Uh, be careful. Be careful with that mentality. Uh, you'll get in trouble. Amen. Ask God what He wants for you and let God give you what you need. Amen. Come, come in need and ask God to give you what you need. All hearts and minds clear? Yes, sir. Amen. Because, uh, the Lord said, see, and he's not bringing, you know, if you pass that and that, he'll bring, the devil bring that. Yes, sir. Thing. Yes, sir. He brought up something happening in the past, trying to destroy and lie and all that. And God brought the truth out. Praise God. Well, he's going to destroy it. The Lord will make it stronger. Tonight, I can stand here and say, my thing is stronger than it was before this time. Praise God. And I thank the Lord for bringing us to it, and I thank you for always being there for me. Boy, that's a blessing. Amen. It's been amazing. I mean, it, it's really been amazing. Wow. He's took it You know, that's my young, that's my family. You can't have it. Right, brother. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen, brother Tim. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. We'll be dismissed. Amen. Brother John.